Welcome to the Concealed Taco Dudes Podcast, episode 139. Woo! The, the extra loud cheer was because it's not just me and Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we have Ricky here from uh, Magholter. I am back. It's been a long time since I've been on. It has. You've been You're a lot too more Marcus. can. Thank you. You've been on yours. Yeah. Summer's here. Summer's almost over, it seems. I know. Kids are going back to school in a few weeks. Yeah. That's great. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm excited for that. <laughs> I work from home, and so oh, yeah. all the kids at home. That like, makes it way hard. It makes it way hard. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Dad, can you do this? Hey, Dad, yeah. what about this? And then one kid starts playing the piano, and you're like, not till after five, <laughs> right? yeah. please. Yep. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I'm the same. I remember those days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was always my wife would come out to the shop. Hey, I'm just going to leave for a few minutes. Can you just keep an eye on me? And I'm yeah. like, nope. <laughs> um, okay. And then it's like you don't get any work done for two hours. Yeah, she's gone for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was that was a good move when I when I moved my shop <laughs> out of the house. Yes, yes. Anyway, should we knock out some sponsors? Let's do. We are in my brain is like NOE. not even working today. <laughs> we are in the NOE studio. Yes. And they are the makers of the finest bullet molds around. Yes, for sure. They make them in aluminum, brass, and, and steel. now steel. Yeah. What a steal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We're starting off with dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long yeah. have you been holding on to that one? Oh, forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, use coupon code FLT001 and you'll save 10%. Yep. And it's stackable with your $1,000 discount. Wow. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Utah Air Guns at utahairguns.com. Purveyors of the finest air guns and accessories known to man. Yes. Good stuff. Indeed. I heard I heard rumors of a new FX, was it called the Slugger? Oh, like a gun dedicated for I shooting slugs? I think so. Mm-hmm. And uh, Travis over there, is, was, I was talking with him. Actually, I went in to get a haircut, and he was sitting there waiting. Oh, that's <laughs> hey. funny. So we, we were chatting. He's like, just getting tired of everybody asking about when this new slugger's coming out. <laughs> when is it? Where is it? Where is it? So I thought I'd fuel the fire. So everybody call you tire guns. <laughs> Travis. Say, hey, I heard that no, first, is... first you got to say, hey, is Travis available? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Travis, I have a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's kind of exciting, but hmm, awesome slugger. stuff over there. Check them out at utireguns.com and use the code AIRCANDY when you check out, and you'll get free shipping and free turret stickers. Yes. We also have... Black Ice Coatings, blackicecoatings.com. Fine gun finishes and really anything else that you want to have coated or finished. Cerakote, Teflon coat, hydro dipping, all that good stuff. The quality of work that comes out of their shop at Black Ice Coatings is amazing. Everybody that I've shown stuff that I've had done is impressed. And I've had people come in and be like, oh, I got a, I got somebody that does hydro dipping or i got a cerakote guy or and then i show them one of my guns and they're like whoa oh (laughs) (laughs) oh that's what it's supposed to look like (laughs) so check out black ice Black Black ice coatings at blackicecoatings.com call them up tell them you want it slickery i love just going into their shop and seeing what they're working on yeah yeah it's never related to mag holder and what i'm picking up from him yeah it's just okay what do you guys What's that over there? Like, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Also, check out their Instagram feed. Yeah. I think, I think that's where they post the most yeah, pictures. They're most and active there. And yeah. So you can see with the latest stuff that they're working on and whatnot. Then we have Mag Holder. Yeah. What's new at Mag Holder? Oh, we've we've man. been mentioning the upcoming Double Stack yeah. 45s, but I don't know a whole lot about what. Yeah, and when. so yeah, that's right, because we launched that, and I still haven't been in since. Right. So the the double stack mag holder 45 ACP and 10 millimeter, nice. those are, they're still available for pre-sale. We're hoping to start shipping them within the next couple of weeks. 
Nice. Uh, molds are just about done, and then we'll start running plastics in them uh, within the next week or two. Awesome. So we are super excited about that. Those have been a long time oh, coming. Man. I know Mark <clears throat> talked about yep. the possibility of those yep and uh for a long many years we had a long list been asking of people for that... them. so i i'm excited are you going to have them available for the xdm in 10 oh, yeah. millimeter oh yeah okay yep. good. in That's fact i, I think the, the xdm 10 millimeter i think is probably the most popular really of what we've pre-sold it was that the really XDM 10. i'm surprised that it's yeah. not like a glock 21 mm, yeah no that xdm was oh okay i think it's a better gun personally <laughs> but Glock anyway. 20? Or the 20. The yeah, 21 is the 45, the and the 20 is oh, the yeah. 10 millimeter. Yeah. 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 Either way. So cool. Glock in their numbers, curse that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. They're, the Glock 45 is a 9 millimeter. Right. Go figure. Yeah. But yeah. Kind of funny. Yeah. So, uh, Mag Holder, we're, I mean, things are crazy busy over there. Um, coupon code, get in the van, I have candy. Uh, it's where all the candy codes started. Mm. Yeah. Make, yeah. <laughs> and then we we have that that one's a little hard, uh, so we have Taco Twenty Two if that's easier. Taco Twenty Two, okay. No Taco Twenty as well. Oh, <laughs> Taco Twenty also. <laughs> okay, very cool. And then uh, Concealment Solutions at concealmentsolutions.com. One new thing that uh, I need to get the website set up to do this, but I have started ordering. Uh, I can basically print whatever image you want on Kydex and make you a holster out of it. So I had a customer come in, and, and I've this has been available to me for a while. I just haven't ever used it. I had a customer come in, and she has this tattoo of this, like a fallen angel type thing and skulls and everything that she wanted on her holster. And so they sent me the image and, yeah, contacted the guy, and I was like, this is going on a P365 holster. So... It's kind Make of a, it small. It's kind of a big mm -hmm. image. Can you shrink it? Is it still going to look good? And he sent me a proof, and I was like, okay, that'll work. Dude, I had the Kydex like four days later. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is working good. It looked good. The holster turned out awesome. I've put pictures of it on Instagram and, and Facebook if you want to see it. Um, and what was funny is they came in, and, and her husband's with He's like, yeah, and he's like, flips her around and pulls her shirt up uh, this tattoo covers her whole back well <laughs> down below her waist i was like holy crap <laughs> anyway so they were super happy with that and since then i have another guy they're all tattoos that they i want this i'm getting this tattoo and i want it on my holster also huh. so if you have something like that or your company logo you know if you're a firearms instructor or something that might be cool to have your logo on your holster you know contact me i can get it done so can i ask is it on white kydex then or? depends this was this was a uh, more or less a, a white or a gray image on black kydex okay oh that's cool yeah so it, it looked really good turned yeah. out nice so that's an option if that's something you're interested in um, just contact me for that right now i've gotten a lot of new gun molds in i can't even remember them all um Wilson Combat, if you're carrying a Wilson Combat, EDC, any of the EDCs, I think I have all of them now, <laughs> including some of their Beretta reworks and stuff like that. Um, Are they all on your site? Yeah. Cool. The, the Walther PDPs, I think I have all their sizes now. It drives me nuts. It's like <laughs> the only difference between the guns is a half an inch of barrel. But if I don't have that, the, some of the holsters don't work mm -hmm. unless you put a smaller gun in a bigger holster, right. you know. So anyway, if you've been looking for something, um, check out the website again. It might be there now. If it's not, shoot me another message and say, hey, I'm still looking for this. But uh, anyway, use the code when you check out. Show me the candy, all one word, and that'll save you 15%. Nice. So that's what's going on. All right. Do we want to do listener feedback or a news story first? Let's go listener feedback. All right, let's do it. All right, I have just a couple, but one of them is long, so... Oh, great. Yeah. Good job, Kevin C. <laughs> wow. All right, this first one is from Matt. He says, I was listening to an old Gun Dudes episode this weekend, cracking up hearing about Carl's TSA story, back of my hand, episode 315 at... 11.50 time. Wow. As a cherry on top, I came across the attached picture this morning and busted out laughing. Please share it with Carl. 
Hope he's doing well and that he can come on more episodes. Yeah, we're hoping that too. So he sent <laughs> he sent a, a picture of this like big dude and he's getting felt up by the TSA guy. Oh. And he has a shirt on that says, it's not gay if it's TSA. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, all right. And then this one is from Kevin C. Okay. And it was actually a couple different ones because he sent one. Then he's like, oh, I forgot to add this. Oh, I forgot to add this. So, Come on, Kevin. Get your act together. <laughs> and he says, found this in my unsent drafts. Please read or ignore as you will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust us. Trust me, we will. He says, listening to episode 130, I'm a retired mechanical engineer. Two items came up where the toughness of metal is important. The zinc bullets shattering and the 44s impacting the steel plates. It's been four decades since engineering school, but I use some of this stuff in my various jobs. Metals tend to have two stages where you can apply force to them. Below the yield point, it is elastic, and when you remove the force, it returns to its original shape and size. This is pretty unimportant in your current discussion, talking about zinc and lead bullets. Right. When you exceed the yield point, you get permanent deflection. If a metal is brittle, it, sh it soon shatters. If it is ductile, it forms deforms permanently. If a metal is ductile but strong, it takes a lot of force to deflect it. Impact energy and elongation before break are measured are measures of the metal's combination of strength and ductility. A uh, metal can have relatively low strength and high elongation, and it will absorb a lot of energy. And then he says, TLDR, that's too long, didn't read. Mm -hmm. So the summary. <laughs> Taco, <laughs> can you find a more ductile zinc to cast? There are lots of die casting alloys out there. Don't know what you have access to. So I will say that the the zinc alloy that I have access to is the free like <laughs> clip-on wheel weights yeah. that are in plentiful. You know, plentiful. It's what people usually sort and throw away or uh, take to a recycler right. because they really want the lead ones. Right. So, and that was the idea was taking something that was basically a free metal or like a throwaway thing mm -hmm. and providing a use or finding a use for it in, you know, with bullet casting and, and, and such and right. reloading. So he says, look for a high impact rating, IZOD or Charpie, those must be engineering terms, <laughs> or higher elongation percentage in the spec sheet. Mild steel has high elongation. The work the bullet does to deform, uh, to deform it absorbs the bullet's energy. So it didn't go through, just made a divot. That's <laughs> when we were talking about how I was I was sure that with the velocity mm -hmm. that those 44 mags were going at, I think it was, what was it? Uh, it, was, it was over 2,000 feet per second. Yeah. Right? I thought that for sure with the hardness of the zinc bullet was going to penetrate through the that, steel? Uh, steel, the mild steel. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the, the steel actually like totally bent. Like you could see almost the full bullet on the mm -hmm. other side of the yeah. zinc wow. or the, the uh, steel. Yeah, uh -huh. it just stretched. And then the zinc just shattered and you know huh wow so that was kind of an interesting thing yeah and he says <clears throat> another one found in unset drafts thanks thanks again for doing another podcast he says taco do you plan to hunt with with any zinc bullets i would love to know how they perform terminal ballistics wise <laughs> so i would say if you were wanting to use zinc bullets for hunting the only kind of hunting i would do would be varmint hunting yeah because you would not get the expansion right. that you would need for like larger game. And I mean, basically it, you have a lighter bullet, which isn't going to penetrate as much also. Right. Sure. So it's not as, it's not as heavy and dense and it's not going to expand. So it kind of makes it a crappy material for, it, it, for hunting like a deer yeah. or something or elk or whatever. It doesn't do any of the things you need it to. Now where I see the potential would be the opposite side where you're, you're hunting small things and you are using tiny bullets or lightweight bullets going really fast. Yeah. yeah. And so I could see, you know, making a, even a little like, kind of like a pop gun type 223 zinc load. Yeah. Where you could get it going about, you know, 1500 feet per second and like have like no recoil, yeah. right? Like super low recoil with a, a faster pistol powder to get that pop and, yeah. you know. And I could see that being a really nice little squirrel load that's 
you know, very cheap because you're using a pistol powder instead of rifle powder and, and you're using less powder and you're using a free metal. Yeah. So that would make sense and where you'd want to shoot like a bunch of things like that. Hmm. The other area would be uh, if you're trying to go, and this, this is going to require some testing, but to see how fast we can actually push the zinc bullet without having it shred up yeah, or coming apart. Coming apart. It exits the barrel. Yeah. yeah. So two two three has they usually have quite a, a fast twist relatively speaking. It's you know one and seven right. to one and nine usually in yeah. like an AR fifteen, but a lot of the bolt actions nowadays have, have a twist like that. So getting a high velocity where it's spinning that fast, it, it could be destructive to the bullet, but until we actually test it it will yeah. be unknown. Hmm. So that's that would be another potential hunting uh, load. Load would be a, a, a fast two two three. So hmm. a slow two two three, a slower but still faster than you know pistols, and right. then and then a fast you know two two three load. That's all I could really see as a hunting purpose right now, just because the the zinc just doesn't carry the energy right at farther distances <clears throat> like like lead does. Right. So. And that was it for okay. listener feedback. So thanks for sending those in, guys. We appreciate it. Awesome. And now, the news. <laughs> we have a news story. And, and who sent this in? That was also Kevin C. He, he's uh, hogging all our Kevin. time. <laughs> well, this is becoming the Kevin C. show, apparently. <laughs> anyway, here's a news story that Kevin sent us that was, that was fairly interesting, which is why we're going to read it says, a 93-year-old suburban Los Angeles homeowner who a relative said was frustrated over being the victim of numerous home break-ins shot and critically wounded a burglar and scared off the would-be thieves' accomplices, according to authorities. It's always interesting to read these stories coming out of L.A. and, yeah. and these, these places where, yeah, owning a gun and being able to defend yourself with it's one is... It's kind of looked far more complicated. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. it's complicated, but it's also looked down upon by you know maybe the news people or 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 everyone around. Everyone (laughs) said the retired plumber identified as Joe Howard Teague by the Riverside County Sheriff's Department turned the tables. Oh, they rotated rotated the tables tables. (laughs) on the group of home invaders early Wednesday when he grabbed his gun and confronted them inside his house. In Moreno Valley, the sheriff's office said. I approached them to put them under citizen's arrest. <laughs> you can tell he's 93. Yes. <laughs> they, you, you know what? I think, I think old people get away with far more than... They if, should. They should. They should get a pass. But they do get away with, like, a lot more than, you know, younger people. Like, I think if... Yeah. This young guy Ricky over here <laughs> attempts to place somebody on citizen's arrest. Under arrest. Yeah, <laughs> then uh, he he might end up in jail. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. He said. Um, so he tries to put them under citizen's arrest. They wouldn't adhere to that, and then one of them came at me with a fishing pole. Teague told reporters outside the home Thursday. He said the suspects who entered his home after kicking open his door began throwing things at him as he tried to hold them at gunpoint. These people are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Throw he- something at him. He's pointing a gun at us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just like somebody comes to a gunfight with a pocket knife, you know, <laughs> Teague said. <laughs> guys, this guy's a sharp 93-year-old. Yeah. I like him. <laughs> T called 911 at about 12:30 p.m. and reported a burglary in progress at his home. The sheriff's office said the sheriff's office said in a statement. As deputies responded, T told the dispatcher he was holding several suspects according to the sheriff's department. Deeg said the suspects included at least one woman. When deputies arrived at Teague's home, they found one of the suspected burglars suffering from a gunshot wound. A witness told deputies that several people were seen fleeing Teague's home on foot prior to the arrival of deputies. The wounded suspect, identified as Joseph Ortega, 33, of Moreno Valley, was hospitalized in critical condition, according to the Sheriff's Department. Investigators have established that several individuals, including Ortega, 
were inside Ting's Teague's property when a shooting occurred. When a sh- mm-hmm. that, that, that's <laughs> I wonder what shooting it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The one that took down the bad guy? trying to determine if it's the same one. Yeah, probably. Oh, my goodness. Probably. But, uh... The moral of the story is that reporters need to go back to school. Yes, they need to... (laughs) To learn how to write. Write a little better. (laughs) This one wasn't as bad as others. Yeah. Others, we've had to almost completely rewrite ourselves before we could actually read them properly. But, uh, this... uh, Another good example of why guns are important important what else could this guy have done and yeah i was gonna say there's several there's multiple throwing it said several yeah it said so several. There's, there's a lot so there, i'm thinking at least four or five yeah I don't, I don't know the gun laws of obviously california in pertaining to like protecting yourself in yeah. your own home but I would be concerned. I mean, like you said, I think that yeah. he probably received a pass compared to someone who's younger doing that. Yeah, I, don't I think, think they have the same laws like Utah does. Right. Where we're yeah. Stand your so yes, yeah, stand yeah, your exactly. ground, castle yeah. doctrine, castle doctrine yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. I think that in duty to flee, I think they have, like in. I don't know if. Hey, I think if you're 93, you can't flee. Yeah, that's, okay? that's the thing. It's like once once you're already in the the mess, it's like you can't get away because they're yeah. they're rushing they're at in you. Your right. House. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, but. I I think in I can't think of a place where you would be in trouble defending yourself with a firearm in your own home. The I you think be, you're in pretty New safe. Jersey. There's there are s- several think, states that are so anti-gun. I think depending yeah. on what the weapon they have, though, if they didn't have yeah. a weapon, that's where they had a fishing pole. I bet you. So, but there's, there's, even in California. Interesting. But. So I learned this at Mag Forty. Masad Ayub was telling a story very similar. Okay. There was a cop on trial for I think he killed the guy. So I think he's on trial for murder, but I I don't know that for sure. So he's got this guy down. The cop has the suspect down on the ground. He's handcuffing him. And this was a big guy, apparently. He gets one of the cuffs on him, and the guy breaks loose and starts swinging that handcuff at him with the other end open. Mm. So there is a metal hook swinging at him. And I believe, I don't know if he killed the guy or not, but I believe he did shoot him and was able to detaining him after that, either dead or alive. I don't remember. In the courtroom, Mass was in as an expert witness. Yeah. And the the prosecution is trying to say there was no reason for him to, to shoot this guy. He didn't have a lethal weapon and da 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 And Mass asked the, the bailiff, he said, can I see your handcuffs? He puts one of the handcuffs on a sink, has the other end open swings it and takes a big old chunk out of the wood of the railing on the witness stand and he goes you tell me that's not a lethal weapon yeah. oh. <laughs> that's awesome. and and the guy the guy was acquitted wow and mass got billed for the, <laughs> the repair of the of the jury not the jury box but the witness stand or whatever so yeah you know, and if you talk to any cop and ask them, so in all of the cases that you've been on and all the calls you've been on, what more people are hospitalized and, and injured by what implements, they will tell you fists and feet. Yeah. Mm. P- put more people in hospitals than anything else. Yeah. And depending on the person, you know, if it's, you know, if you're 6'2 and... 250 pounds and the person that you defended yourself against is half your size and they didn't have a weapon you're gonna have a hard time justifying that but but being what 93 93 93 years old i think you can he was kind of a skinny skinny guy too being 93 sure well like i saw a picture of it okay yeah (laughs) but but either way even if they didn't have a weapon they're throwing things at him from his house there's and several of them. Several, yeah. I don't think they needed a weapon in order for him to be justified to start shooting because I they just, could have killed him. I don't know if you guys easy. remember that the case here in Utah. I won't bring up names because it's actually local to our area where a, a guy um, got, got in an argument with his brother-in-law in a basement and the brother-in-law picked up a chair and started to come at him. And so he, he shot his brother-in-law and killed his brother-in-law. Oh, gosh. Um, but he was arrested and went to trial. Yeah. And, and wasn't presumed, you know, that he was necessarily innocent. Yeah. Just by, by that. And so that's why I wonder. That was in Utah, yeah. which is fairly 
you know, sure. those same standard ground laws. So I just wonder. It, I just, I don't know. My, my thought was just in California, I'd be wary of sure. understanding I mean, exactly you, what you, you can always do. have to be careful. Yeah, sure, right. Yeah, right. and it also probably depends on he. You know, if that guy was the aggressor to that point. Yeah. Then yeah. you can't you can't be the aggressor, and then all of a sudden when someone pulls a chair and is going to hit you with it, then you pull your gun and shoot them. Yeah, and I, and I yeah, think sure. you so. Know. There's there's probably more to the story than there's there's yeah. also yeah right there is there's also you know whose house were they in it sounds like where they're related regardless of whose house it was they were both there under you know by permission they were both allowed to be where they were as opposed to somebody who kicks in your door yeah, and is sure, in, that's invading yeah, the place point. yeah you know so there's there's all those kind of things yeah, that's a good point you know there's also you know if he was at the brother-in-law's house and that happened and he was by sure. the front door, it's like, why didn't you just book it out? Yeah, right. You know, so there's yeah. there's always a million different things to take into consideration. And you have to make all those considerations in a split second when you're in the situation, right. which doesn't make it any better. Um, yeah. But that's why we kind of... We, we run scenarios through our heads. Yes, yeah. I do. I do. You know, sitting yeah, in the too. restaurant or at the, oh, yeah. at the concert at the kids' school or whatever, mm-hmm. looking around, okay, if this happens, what do I do? Where, Where do going? I go? Yeah. Oh, I do What's that. Gonna, yeah. It's the only thing that keeps you sane in yeah. some of those school <laughs> performances. <laughs> when we go to a restaurant, you know, and my family starts sitting down, I always tell them, nope, that I have to sit there. Yep. Yeah. You really? Yeah. yeah I, have to, I have to sit in the seat that facing is facing the door, the, door, uh-huh. the yeah. entrance. Entrance and exit. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. My wife's got to the point where it's like we go to sit down. And she's like, "You want to sit there, don't you?" I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. Small practices like that can give you a little bit yeah. more heads up if something's about to happen. Yeah. Yeah, and not that you're paranoid. You're just careful. Mm-hmm. Prepare. And there's a big difference between being paranoid and being careful. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize If that. you walk into the restaurant with foil on your head, <laughs> that is paranoid. <laughs> yeah. That's the line. If you yeah. get it from the chef and then put it on afterwards, <laughs> then you're okay. <laughs> All right. Are we g- jumping into what we did with guns? Yeah. Ricky. I'm what I did with guns. <laughs> You lost a few? <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? Uh, I, yeah. Sure, I guess. Lost a few and cleaned yeah. a few? Yeah. How, how much detail do you want me to go into here? I think, I think we need, some, some, we need, yeah, we need the, the, the story so that there's some context. Okay. We, we mentioned parts of it last episode. Yeah. And so, yeah, it'd be okay. good to hear from you yeah. what happened. So, um, I'll, I'll kind of be fairly brief, but we were, sure. we were on a... A high adventure camp for our our local church group, uh, and so we had about twelve boys and, and roughly six leaders, uh, split between five vehicles, and so we drove uh, thirty minutes to the Capitol Reef National Park. That's uh, uh, here in Utah, one of our great national parks. It's uh, amazing to, to explore, yep. and so the boys were excited. We were excited. Good canyon we had country. That. Oh yeah, that's the most underrated national uh, park. I was telling someone the one that yesterday. State. It's a yeah. hidden gem that most people don't. I they just skip I over. I spent a whole lot of time in there. I love that. I've, love I've that spent park. several days. Everywhere there. around it, I've been a lot. Sure. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so we had a, a plan uh, to go to Cassidy Arch in the morning, uh, hike that. It's about a mile and a half hike uh, up to the arch. And then that afternoon, we were going to do um, Sulphur Creek hike. Uh, we had watched the weather. Uh, you know, we had looked at it, and, and it was showing uh, rain that afternoon and so we were you know being watchful of that uh, we had checked that that uh, weather forecast right before we got there uh, i'm just putting that out there because everyone keeps saying you know <laughs> you, you, didn't, you, you didn't watch the weather we did we were we had it, th- there were five of us for, for outdoors people that maybe. aren't familiar with this area which i'm sure most of you are not this is classic red rock canyon country yeah slot canyons when we get rain in these places and it doesn't even have to be significant rain. You get a decent rain shower, and the the you get floods. Yeah, 
and and when you get massive rain, you get mass destruction. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, and, and I can I can go into some of that detail. Yeah. On on the statistics of this storm we we experienced. So we got there. I think it was about ten. Uh, took us an, a little over an hour to get. Well, yeah, it took us a little bit of, over an hour to get up to the top to the arch. Um, the whole way it was eighty degrees sunny. Uh, we've got pictures and videos. Show showing that there was no clouds um, when we got into the arch. Uh, you could see some clouds coming. Right when we were done taking pictures, seconds after on top of the arch, uh, we started to get some sprinkles. We're like, okay, let's gather up our stuff and start going. And then just the clouds just hit and they just formed and just hit us hard. And so we started booking it back. Our, our group kind of split into. Uh, three different kind of groups heading down that mountain, you know, depending on the speed that we were trying to book it down. So all the kids were way in the back. All yeah. the kids were like, we're out. We're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> so that arch, have you have you been to Cassidy Arch? Yeah. yeah so that yeah. right after the arch, there's a lot of kind of slick rock you're going, um, kind of somewhat side hilling it's not very steep right. side hilling but you're still kind of side hilling on that slick rock. And the rain was just... I mean, it was a little dicey just going across that because of how hard and probably what water slick. was probably yeah, flowing oh yeah, over. Yeah, we had yeah. we were going through some small streams that were not there before. Um, <laughs> so we, you know, we start hiking down. Uh, we come around a bend and uh, we saw <laughs> what was the road. That so uh, to, to give some extra context, I apologize. We had pulled up to the parking lot. The parking lot was full. Um, and so we... The overflow parking for that parking lot is in that little canyon. It's right along it's, the canyon, and we pulled up out of the road onto... So we were above that, that wash road, um, Grand Wash Road. Um, there were no signs. I don't know how many people have said, oh, there are signs there. There are no signs where we parked. <laughs> um, and, you know, we talked to the ranger afterwards. We did everything that everyone does. Uh, we did not do anything wrong in terms of where we parked. You know, there was, there was no citations given. Uh, so anyways, we, we come around one of the bends where you're looking down on the parking lot, and we see that road is now a river that we're parked along. Um, yeah, like, oh, not that, a creek. No, a no. Full-blown, <laughs> yeah, I mean, muddy 20 river. 20-foot, 30-feet-wide river, I don't yeah. know. Um, and, okay, that sucks. And so we, we go around, and then we come around another bend, and we see that river is now up to probably mid-doors on our, our all our trucks. Oh. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, oh, socks, you know, we're talking detailing, you know, it's gonna, <laughs> I'm going to get my kids some slave labor, get them in there and clean that truck out. Uh, and so then we keep co- continuing on and we, we get to a spot to where you start to descend down to the, the last little stretch of that trail, which then heads to the parking lot, I don't know, a few hundred yards. Mm-hmm. And that's now the river. And so we're, we're cut off and stranded on, on the, just kind of on the rocks, um, so there's a few overhangs that we're kind of hanging out, and then, <laughs> and, and then we see our trucks start to float by. We we see, <laughs> we, we see, you know, there there was two of our trucks from our group floated down, and so I saw my buddy's truck float down first. Um, Should have put your parking brake. Uh, <laughs> I never use it. it one time, that one time. See? <laughs> Um, I saw his float by, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, sucks for him, you know, it's going to be hard to figure that out. And then 10 seconds later, I look up, and I'm like, please no, please no, please no. Oh, there's my truck, and yep, it's floating down. Oh, man. So, yeah, so, you have video of your truck we, yeah. floating down, and you can see it bouncing off rocks yeah. and getting yeah. wedged yeah. and water just pounding it. Yep. Um, Sad day. So w- what I did with guns the last couple of weeks was, um, you know, we had taken the young men out and were teaching them how to responsibly shoot firearms and handle firearms. And it was a, an awesome experience that we had done the day before. Some of the boys had never shot a firearm, and so it was great to teach them the, the proper safety techniques. And, um, and it, it was great. And, uh, you know, I had left my, f- and actually I'll, I'll own up here, I had left my firearms in my truck and I made the conscious decision I did. I had a bed cover over that truck. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, they were safer there from the boys than if I had taken them into the cabin where we were staying, mm-hmm. uh, where boys would be coming in and out to get food or use the restroom. And so in my mind, they're out of sight, out of mind in that truck bed, sure. bed cover. So that's why they were still there. 
and 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 so all the most of those guns were gone. Actually, all the guns were gone out of the truck. Um, we 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 recovered. Uh, How many were there? I had twelve guns um, that I had taken. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Um, yeah. That's it, that's painful. Yeah. Some some really really cool guns that uh, I had taken to give it and give those boys kind of some once in a lifetime experiences. Uh, and and so yeah, we recovered that the back window of that truck had had smashed open because my my truck crashed uh, yeah. into a rock facing down river, and so just debris and water and sediment was just pounding that window and it broke. Um, and so two of my rifles had floated into the back uh, of the truck, and so right before we left, we went down and and uh, to the truck to see if we could get to it. And luckily, the water had gone down a little bit enough to where. We waded into it and broke windows and, and got a couple guns out. Hmm. Um, and then when they pulled the truck out, I was able to go down and, and I knew of a pistol I'd put in the bottom under the seat, um, and so I was able to recover that one. And then uh, the ranger had one rifle returned to the the visitor center, and so the four of the twelve guns have been somewhat returned. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I did. What do you guys do? Well, I bought a metal detector. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what Gene was saying. Oh, I need to go down there with my metal detector. Yeah. Uh, actually, the ranger, uh, they sent a, a couple interns down there, and all along that riverbed, they spent, I think, a couple days, and they didn't find anything. I'm so sure. There it, was... Their stuff probably either so completely buried, yeah. it'll never surface in the next... 20 years yeah. or it's so far down so yes river. To, to add some detail to that is the 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 cartel all has your guns. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the ranger said she'd worked there for 15 years and she said that was the worst storm she's ever seen in 15 years so she said she was in the the ranger station and they were watching their their weather yeah yeah monitor whatever. i'm sure they monitor really closely yeah oh yeah for sure and so yeah. she they started to see some weather kind of uh pick up and she said she turned away for like a minute and turned back, and all of a sudden the whole screen was red. Um, <laughs> so it, just, it, just, it just appeared, um, and they were not they weren't prepared for it. So she yeah. actually drove down. Uh, they had some signs in the parking lot, so she drove down just to get her signs and see if she could warn anybody. And then she got trapped in that parking lot with all our well, not my vehicle because it was washed down, but <laughs> all the other people and vehicles in that parking lot. So she was trapped down. So oh, she wasn't. Wow. They weren't even prepared for it. Yeah. Well, and you guys weren't the only ones affected by this. There were there were groups that had to be helicoptered, Air, airlifted, airlifted yeah. out of areas yeah. that they were in 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 Capitol Reef because yeah. they were totally cut off and stranded yeah. and, and stuff. So, and it, it seems like every year in Southern Utah in that area. You know, there's Goblin there's always, Valley and, and yeah. other areas, same type of thing, and, and people people end up getting killed in flash yeah. floods and slot canyons and stuff like that, and it's it's sad. And the scary thing about, like, the slot canyons in particular is it doesn't even have to be raining where you are mm-hmm. for water to come down. Come it can be right raining right. 10 sure. miles away and fill the end of that canyon and And once and it starts you. flowing. It's, yeah, so yeah. it's... it's yeah, it, you got to be careful, and even even when you are, sometimes it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Well, and one one interesting thing about the weather over there by you know Boulder Mountain, Capitol Reef is mm-hmm. the the way the weather can shift directions. So oh, we yeah. were I, I we were up on top of Boulder Mountain, which is not very far from Capitol Reef. Right. And I I put a little or I put my cell phone out on a on a tripod to do like a little time lapse of the lake, mm-hmm. and it was it was really interesting. So just uh, I think I just recorded for like a half hour, mm-hmm. but watching it in in fast motion, you could see the wind like blowing the the on the lake just shifting like all sure. like different directions yeah different directions yeah. like every and it would change like every couple minutes it just you know yeah so it's just very unpredictable up there you, you don't know it's kind of swirly and stuff storms kind of swirl around and, and whatnot, yeah. But, yeah 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 the weather it, i mean the entire state weather is unpredictable yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at the weather on my phone and it says it's raining where I am, and I'm like, it's not raining where I am. If you yeah. want a job or a career it, as, with no accountability, be a weatherman. Be a weatherman. <laughs> or, or a politician. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the, there's a saying here in Utah, if you don't like the weather, just wait 15 minutes. Right. Because it's going to change. Yeah. So uh, yeah, on that note, 
I was in Park City Friday night riding with my brother. Down here, it was like mid-80s. It was hot. Up there, it was in the low 60s. Wow. And we were riding through these forests, and it had rained. And so we're riding through the bushes. We're getting wet. At one point, I was like, we're going to be in trouble if we keep getting wet and the sun's starting to go down. Mm. Uh, Seriously, I had the seat heater on on the drive home. In your truck? This was in my brother's car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I was that cold. Yeah. You know? And then we got back to the house and get out of the car and it's like oh it's hot out here yeah yeah so kind of kind of crazy but yeah well and even going from you know on top of the boulder mountain yeah we uh the first night we were there it froze yeah did it really it, yeah it did freeze some yeah. of our water like froze a little bit mm-hmm. huh. and then you know then you drive back down to utah valley and yeah. it's like 95 degrees uh-huh. yeah. so it just Yep. Kind of, kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, elevation and location. Yep, just for sure. <clears throat> uh, that's actually my second flash flood in two years. Uh, I was in a, in Bryce Canyon last year, and we we had gone down into that popular uh, rim to rim. I can't remember what it's called. Where you well, not rim to rim? But yeah. Where you, you drop down and then you go through I some think that's, slots. Is and that the Fairyland Trail? Like, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty common. Everyone that knows it. Really cool. It's a long one. It's a long. It one. is yeah. a long one. Yeah, and rain came in and we were trapped down there for a couple hours with all our families and kids and oh really so yeah moral of the story that i want to bring to everyone stay away don't from go me okay good to, good to know we'll make a mental note of that <laughs> so the other question i had for you is you had in our little text group you were asking about best ways to clean yeah. Because your guns were, were just full of mud. Yeah, so the, the four guns I have are just still hammered. and. Did you not clean them out yet? Yeah, I have. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, if they're still like... No, no, no. That's yeah. Well, uh, there's <laughs> a little one... bit of negligence <laughs> happening there. <laughs> the, the one gun I haven't retrieved yet down there, I'm. it's probably, probably trashed. Done. Yeah. yeah. But, but you can't get rid of it. So how did you end up no, cleaning, it's a, it's a cleaning your guns? Now. Um, so I really, I, I mean, I followed Gene just said, just wash them off. So yeah. I just... Yeah. Just, just the hose out. For some the reason, that, that scared me. And so I just, which they're all, the guns that I retrieved that I have in my <laughs> possession right now were all pol- polymer and steel. So I just hosed them off and dried them off and made sure they were clean. Yeah, so they're not going to be any worse. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know? yeah. Now they're just less mud. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've done so and far now. A bunch of oil to prevent. Yeah, right. Then yeah. I just did a basic cleaning, yeah. Okay. Did you did you happen to use like a penetrating oil? That sometimes helps with, you know, if something's been soaking in mud for yeah. A few uh, days. I'd have to go see what yeah. is listed on the bottle. Or I'd, I'd get like a CPL and just soak everything. Soak yeah. Just let it sit yeah. overnight even. Yeah. But have you shot them since? No. No. Are you afraid to shoot them? Uh, no. No, I'm not. All right. I mean, functionality, they look. They don't look fine. When, when you rack the slide, like does it uh, sound gritty uh, at all? Like, no. You got all uh, the grit out? No, on my 365, no, it's it's fine. Nice. So, that is good news. Yeah. I do need a new holster, though. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to clean that one. I can I like, I screw can, it. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> it, it's probably embedded in the kydex. It's like yeah, sandpaper it now. Is, it's orange now. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's stuff you have to hang on to because that's stuff. We talked about soulless guns and polymer guns yeah, are right, soulless. Yeah. Those guns all have soul now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it now was they have a story. forcefully injected <laughs> into them, but yeah, yeah. yeah, they have some character now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, what'd you do with guns? So, try and top that. The day before I left on my bike packing trip a few weeks ago now, I had a call saying, Hey, that gun you ordered came in. <gasps> and I couldn't go get it before, so I had to wait. But I did go pick it up, and I did shoot it. Ooh, it's in a Kimber case. Wow. Ooh, <laughs> pretty. Is that it, the four inch? It's the four inch, the K6. Kimber K6S Combat. Ooh, ready yeah. for combat. So. That actually looks really nice. It, yeah, it does. That, yeah, it is a beautiful thing. I haven't cleaned it since I shot it, but. Uh, it's got a little bit of heft to it. It looks like they have that extra weight in the front yep. under the barrel. Yeah. Yep. It makes it, you could probably shoot 357, it's just fine. And I not. went through about 40 rounds of 148 grain 357 Magnum and 
after that, I was like, I don't want to shoot the rest of this box. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it, it's just, it's snappy. Yeah. It's, it's shooting shooting full power 357 out of a revolver is yeah not like my polymer guns that I'm <laughs> yeah. used to. Yeah. Even I mean, I should have brought the the XDM 10 millimeter down and, and shot compared. them side by yeah. side by side. But I, I, I did enjoy shooting my 10 millimeter a lot more than I enjoy, did shooting this. I but, think that was probably a poor purchase for you because you don't like revolvers and you have wussy hands. So <laughs> I'll pay you, uh, about, I don't know, 60% of what you paid for it. No. And, uh, Inflation's gone the other way now on no. guns. I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. The thing, and, uh, how long did you wait for it? Uh, it was only about three months. Okay. He was thinking it was going to be at least six when I told him what I wanted. But this one's got the walnut uh, combat grip on it. It's a little bit bigger. It's got some finger grooves in it. It feels nice. The what? thing I like the most about this gun that you don't get on most revolvers is there's, like, not a square edge anywhere on this. Yeah, right. They've just rounded over everything. It's just really... It's a cool look. It's really beautifully manufactured, and it and it does shoot nice, although it's... A 357. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that those wood grips look real nice. If you want something that's like yeah, a little bit the, easier to shoot, hogue. get the Hogue ones. I know. They're just it ugly. locks up really tight. It does. It's it's nice. Everything about it is is really well done. And yeah. if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know I'm not a big Kimber fan. I think they're 19 or a revolver guy. Or a revolver guy, that's <laughs> true. I I feel like Kimber has kind of let things slide on their quality control in their 1911s, and they can be kind of finicky and only like to shoot certain kinds of ammo, which that doesn't fly with me. Yeah. If, if you know, a gun should shoot regardless of what you put it's in. It's funny because Gene, he Gene really loves, does, he loves those Kimbers. But. Because he can, he likes to take them, he, and then he. He gets them, and then he takes them apart, and he. Fluffs and buffs and yeah, yeah hones them all. <laughs> and so then he gets I get them all that. smooth and yeah, yeah, because they make absolutely beautiful guns. Their 1911s are beautiful, but yeah, paying that much and Gene doesn't pay full price for anything. Oh yeah, if you know Gene. Oh he, I know. Gene finds the most incredible deals. <laughs> it's totally unfair, but uh, yeah. So he finds a, a sweet deal on a Kimber, and then he takes it to the shop and hones everything, and he's like, this thing is amazing. Okay. So I get that. but mm -hmm. um, And I've probably pissed off every Kimber owner now, but <laughs> that's okay. It's just my opinion. You can yeah. like it or not. <laughs> anyway, that's that's what I did. So All right. So I picked up two new molds. Okay. From, <laughs> from uh, uh, no. <laughs> These ones are... Made by NOE, of course, but they are kind of a design that I came up with, me and Al, right? My 225 grain, they call it the taco bullet. Mm -hmm. That's for the, it's a 30 cal 300 blackout bullet. Right. We basically took that and extrapolated out the design to um, 339 and 358. Okay. So as a 338 bullet, it... Uh, Weighs probably around 275. It says 273, so maybe that's what it weighs yeah. with the wheel weight alloy. But you know, <clears throat> somewhere around 275, 280, and it's it's a really good looking bullet. But uh, wow, yeah, Those I'm are big. Yeah, so I'm excited to try these out in my little 338 Spectre. Okay, that's that 10 millimeter Magnum case that's necked down to 338. Okay, and NOE makes a, a nice heavy one it's like a a grooveless uh was it 315 grain bullet but if you powder coat a little bit too thick on the nose the bore writing section of the nose then you you could have chambering problems depending on the throat of your rifle so this one you know it has that nice little taper and then the nose starts and uh should i'm hoping that it, it's has a long enough nose that it works in that cartridge and that uh, I can use that in the little 338 Spectre as well as I have a rifle being built right now which is going to be a uh, what is it called 8.6 Blackout it's one of the new cartridges yeah, I was going to say I've never heard of that yeah one. basically it's the the weird thing about that cartridge is it, it kind of does the same thing as 338 Spectre but I would say less efficiently with with you know, the case volume and stuff because it's a larger case. It's six, five Creedmoor 
necked up to 338 and okay. kind of cut shorter and necked up. So kind of like a blackout, you know, okay. how, how you do that with 223. Mm -hmm. And that one is for shooting subsonics, but I think that you can have some supersonic loads, but the, what's crazy is they've they've designed it with a one and three twist. Huh. So it does one rotation in three inches. Yeah. That is like- That's a uber slow twist. No, super fast. That's fast? Yes. So it's one, spinning it oh, super one fast. Oh, in three inches, so, gotcha. Yes, instead of like I a was, one in seven right, for right, a 223, right. like was, a fast twist 223. I had it reversed in my head, gotcha. Yeah. So that is, that's kind of unheard of. It's a kind of a new design, and, new and test, what's new the, whatever. What's the logic behind that so fast if you, of a twist? If you look at what they were trying to do is, you know, how do you give energy, more energy to a subsonic round? What's the ways? You have to make a heavier bullet, right? Okay. Because okay, yeah, if you yeah. have just like a little twenty two right, right. going subsonic, it doesn't have as much it energy as a four fifty or so called. Sure, right? sure. So you can either add more weight or the other thing you can do is give it put a corkscrew on the end of the bullet and then spin it really fast so it bores in. I got you. Well <laughs> you can have the, the rotational energy. Yeah. So, it, you know, kind of like a drill, you know, yeah. it's spinning faster. So it does have some kind of kinetic energy from going a certain speed, but then right. also spinning while it goes. Huh. So that was their way of adding more energy to a subsonic round when you're limited by bullet weight. Hmm. So the, the interesting thing about that, though, is like you talk about, you know, you think about a 22 to 50 with a lightweight bolt that you push too fast, you know, what happens to that? Yeah, they they, Poof. they turn into shotgun yeah, into, shells. <laughs> or it turns into dust, right? Yeah, yeah. You see just a little cloud of dust uh, out of the muzzle. So what I want to do with this new cartridge is to test and see if lead, you know, after all that science-y stuff that Kevin C. shared, mm -hmm. if lead can, can hold together at this, at you know, sp at that speed yeah. with that fast of a twist. And if it can be accurate also. Yeah, that's the other thing. When you start spinning them too fast, don't you lose some accuracy sometimes? Uh, it just depends. Yeah. Uh, apparently not. Mm. These with the jacketed bullets that they've tested. Right. But I have a friend, uh, Kenny, from the Eagle Eye Shooting Channel. Right. He, he twisted a bullet apart and it was a jacketed bullet hmm. in that cartridge and he said it wasn't going that fast. Uh. So subsonic velocities or you know, subsonic loadings for that cartridge are gonna be tricky to uh, get to a point, but then the supersonic ones, you gotta be really careful because when you have that fast of a twist with the rifling, you have to keep in mind that the bullet <laughs> can't exit the barrel as quickly right so if you were to use the same charge for you know say like a, a higher end load for say the 338 specter you know to get it going like say 1500 feet per second but then if you do that in the 330 or the 86 blackout where it has to spin it twice as fast then the pressures could spike and you could have some issues with that. Hmm. So twisting bullets apart and uh, <clears throat> spiking pressures are going to be a problem with that cartridge if you're reloading and trying to, you know, push it. Right. So I'm I'm super curious to try this out and yeah. you know it's kind of right up my alley of messing around. But then also that uh, 358 bullet mold that uh, it's 305 grains. This one will be fun to test in uh, some 35 caliber cartridges rifle cartridges and uh, I have a friend who has a it's a 350 legend but it's a custom custom barrel with a, a custom chamber or like a, a chamber opened up to take the right size I I, yeah. I use air quotes the, the correct size of bullet you know instead of yeah. using the nine millimeter size of bullets they went with the you know 350 three, 357 so like you could use regular 35 cal rifle bullets but this one so he wanted to do some heavy subs so I was going to cast some bullets out of this for him, send him some, and, and see if he could, what they do, you know, because he's still, I'm not sure what the, the twist rate is of his barrel, but I'm guessing it's probably like 1 in 14 or 16 or something like that. Uh, but if it's 1 in 10, it should have no problems, but one of those others, it could potentially. So hmm. a lot of testing that I need to do, a lot of... Uh, bullets I need to cast yeah when I I'm, I'm kind of I was gonna do it yesterday but it was just way too hot yeah yesterday like, was way, way hot, hot. Yeah. today's hotter yeah it yeah is. it's just 
it's so hot outside that it's hard to motivated to mo- go, go yeah, over a it, molten uh-huh. pot of metal and like pour some bullets out. But so I did that. I also had the opportunity to uh, go to an undisclosed area camp site and perform service a service project where they have so this. This is a is like a girls camp and yeah, scout like a camp youth, type, youth, youth camp. camp. Yeah, yeah, and has they, cabins and whatnot. And, and this yeah. this place is a place that does not allow firearms. Right. And so because of that, and because of you know kind of choices that they've made, they've developed a, a unique problem of too many ground squirrels. And so they've they have been. I mean, this place is just kind of infested with ground squirrels. They're everywhere. Wow. They're just yeah everywhere. And if you were to, like, just start walking, there are holes through the ground in, like, every... <laughs> anywhere there's dirt. Anywhere there's dirt <laughs> or rocks, there's there's holes going through them. Wow. And the they had uh, someone from the, I think it was DWR. Probably. Yeah. DNR or somewhere. One of those <clears throat> organizations came and told them, hey, if you don't do something about this unmanaged population infestation. infestation then you're going to be seeing cougars and bears in the camps coyotes yep and, yeah all the, unwanted all the predators. predators are yep. going to be coming in because it's just there's too too Rattle many snakes, and so, yeah which they already have but but yeah so they act and uh i talked with one of the guys and they did have a bear sighting there yeah and so they're really they were really needing some help and uh i was uh one of the guys that they thought of nice and so i put together a group and we went up there with air guns and because they have that rule of no no No, no firearms firearms. and the first day we killed how many how many went okay so we had i don't know we had about seven people seven seven or eight and the first day, the first time we went, and, and they have a very limited window of time between groups of camps. Yeah. So we had like a four-hour window or three-and-a-half-hour window, mm-hmm. and we were able to take out 150 the first day. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then this last Friday, <clears throat> we were able to go up again, and we were we had kind of figured out the better way to do that Mm -hmm. and uh we were much more efficient and we got 250. nice and so they do have they have some of the people there who are setting up traps to try and trap them yeah but one one of the the workers there had mentioned how it's the traps are kind of the inhumane way of doing it because the squirrels get trapped and they just run back and forth and their faces are all bloody Mm. you know just from you know, because they, they got nowhere to go and they're panicking, and so right. they just smash up their faces and bloody and stuff, and kind of unsightly for the people coming there to camp to see a, a, a trapped animal a with rabbit, a bloody face. Rabbit squirrel. Yeah, we got this under control. Don't worry about it. And you know, whereas uh, you know, when we do it, they we kill them. And so four hundred. Yeah. How did it look, and how was the population after you? Had there. Been? So you can you can kind of tell a difference. But there's still so many no more. No kidding. Yeah, it's, it's incredible how many. Like I said, if you start walking around, you'll see that there are tunnels under the, like, everywhere. Yeah. Like, everywhere. And and so, yeah, I, I got to go. I got to take my son, Noah. and Nice. He got to go. And uh, my buddy, Riley. Mm-hmm. Man, he got, that guy, man, he, he, I think he got, like, 70 the second wow. day. Wow. He was on a roll. He was. And, and are you using those uh, Hades? Tell yes, us. the Hades, and you can. Those are those are nice. So the difference in, I was the only one to bring a tripod, one of those shooting oh, yeah. stick tripods uh-huh. for the second time. Mm-hmm. I was popping these things from like far shots, you know, yeah. for an air gun. Yeah. And I was getting headshots and neck shots. Like what? Nice. How far do you? Uh, about 60, 70 no yards for. Nice. I mean, that's not. In, crazy for a shot but no for an air gun and a a a ground squirrel yeah that's not bad and but i i probably head and neck shot uh, i don't know probably about 80 percent of the squirrels i I got and so after you guys are done and then the next group comes rolling in then it looks like a massacre no (laughs) (laughs) when you you shoot them what you do is you just pick them up 
toss them into the the tall grass, mm. and then they eat each other. So nice. what what? Yeah, yeah. Ground squirrels are the weirdest things. They like they clean up after themselves. <laughs> they'll they'll be like, hey buddy, how's it going? And then he gets shot, you know. And then he's like, mm, mm, hey, what you're looking kind of tasty. Yeah, they they clean up. So we were just. I'm in, googling this. That is yeah, insane. I didn't we know were just in carnivores. Durango last weekend, Colorado, and we went and did a tour of this this ranch that they do grass-fed beef and mm -hmm. organic gardening and all this stuff and my wife is a big gardener and so she's asking the, the woman that's running the place she's like so what what's the hardest thing you know that you deal with in your garden and everything and she was listing a few of the, the bugs and whatever they're at such high elevation they don't have a whole lot of mm -hmm. stuff that's a problem but she said I think I think it was gophers these are gophers mm -hmm. or ground squirrels that were yeah. that were the biggest problem and they're like well what what do you do with them she's like you know should we we trap them she's like and and kill them and then she's like and then i shove them back down the hole <laughs> <laughs> to send a message to everybody else <laughs> this is what's gonna happen if you don't get out of here <laughs> which is totally hilarious because this is like the total earthy organic wow, you know, yeah, loving yeah. mother earth <laughs> I shove them back in the <laughs> hole <laughs> where they came from. Yes. So what was also kind of interesting is with the taking the longer shots, like kind of s stealthily sneaking up to a place that they are, you know, congregated, a bunch of them. Uh -huh. Then you take longer shots and you, you pop one of them and then they'll come and they s s run right over and start nibbling on their buddy. And then, <laughs> and then you shoot that one, and then another one comes over and starts nibbling on the buddies, and then you shoot that one and, until you get a bunch of And then it's like, guys, of... there's a buffet over here. <laughs> that really changes the whole attitude of, oh, so cute. And, oh, yeah, they're wow, kind of gross. Ground things. squirrels aren't what? cute. Well, my kids, my wife, I don't. I'm yeah. not sitting there like yeah. feeding them anything, but yeah. my kids love them and think yeah. they're adorable. My wife does. But, yeah, these, oh, my these gosh, are monsters. These aren't the bushy-tailed, you know, fox squirrel or whatever you call Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, these. <laughs> These are, these are, these the are nasty crap. little rodents. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, it was, it was pretty crazy That's that That's cool. In Let me eight know hours, next time you're going up. Yeah. I was I was in Park City already when you were getting ready to go when you called me. So right at yeah. the end there. So I was going to say in in eight hours of time, we got roughly 400. Yeah. Wow. wow. And you think about how long it would take you to trap yeah. 400 oh, squirrels. Yeah. In a, in a those little traps that they oh, have, yeah. it would yeah. take forever. You catch them one at a time. Yeah. yeah, they'd reproduce in the time that you it takes you to trap four hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we hope to to be able to go up again. And so, what's the feeling of the people that are working up? There? Oh, it's interesting because a lot of them, the majority of the people, understand what's going on. Yeah, and so they because they have a lot of volunteers up there. Yeah. That, that help out. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because they drive around in these little side by sides up the main trail, and right. you're driving past, and you got these air guns with silencers on them, and moderators on them, and stuff. <laughs> and and some of the old ladies, what's your what's your score? How many? Because <laughs> they knew we were trying to, uh, you know, we we're keeping track of, so we were comp friendly competition, right? Yeah. Who could get the most? <laughs> That's awesome. But uh, so they're they're appreciative. They understand there's a problem. Most of them. You get you get the occasional older lady who's like oh you guys are killing them it's like <laughs> hey lady <laughs> it's either that or, or you get to see uh, mr bear next time yeah, you know? yeah. or it's be like if they were rats would you be yeah you know yeah it, they're, they're not any different right but, so know. well that's pretty cool but yeah anyways uh and i just wanted to throw this out that i i've been like super productive this week i have three v videos that I released wow. this week. So I finally got the Zinc 4570 video out there and I hope to finish the Zinc 44 mag video this week. Cool. So, Where do you watch those? On YouTube okay. the, or Rumble. Yeah. It's a full lead taco Sweet. channel. Cool. So, Very but cool. With that, I think we are out of time. I think we are done. It was great catching up with everybody. It was. It, it's it, been it, a while. It was yeah. good to be back. Yeah, hopefully be be back more. Quit being a stranger. I know. <laughs> Summer right. I think is actually slowed down. So. Oh, July. Got it all out. I think I've been out of the shop almost as much as I've been in mm. the shop <laughs> this month. It and it's not over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, be nice to people. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're supposed to say take some shooting. That's the take some shooting. No, you just point at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take some shooting.
uh, seriously, I had the heat heater, the, the seat heater on 